how to make a custer. Step one, take a three and a half inch round, place your three inch circle on it, and trace it around. Step two, this is optional. Take a bending tool. This one is marked one quarter inch. That's how deep it is right there. Come in and start pre-bending your disc. As you do this, you're only bending it just a little bit. If you try to bend it too much in one go, it will wrinkle and then you have to spend all your time working those wrinkles out. It's still going to wrinkle anyways, but the less aggressive you are, the fewer wrinkles you're going to have to deal with. been around this two or three times. You can see right here where I was a little bit too aggressive and it started a wrinkle. So one option is to bend these back down and try again. Like so. Until I can work that center part up. You can see that's a bit better. The other option is just to go ahead and move on to hammering on the form. So form, I guess I've been put it in. If this was mounted better, I put it in the jaws, but this pin seems to be working okay. Take a hammer and I just start working. As you do this, these are just glancing blows. I'm not hitting it straight on. If I do, instant wrinkle on either side of where I hit. So I can go back, work that back out. Maybe you go back here. I do that a little. Come back to my floor. As you do this, just keep working slowly. Nice soft blows. Lots and lots of soft blows are going to be better than a few really hard ones. Now eventually this will get too hard to move and when that happens take a plumber's torch to it like a propane torch heat it until it turns red dunk it in a bucket of water to cool it off and then you can go back to working again this is called work what happens is the more times you hit it the more it hardens it's called work hardening so if you keep pushing it past the point where it's hard, it will crack or tear in instead of bending. This, I don't think it's quite to the point where it's work hardening yet, so I can keep going for a while. And eventually, it turns out like this. Actually, get yeah, one that hasn't been covered yet. Now, as you do this, 
what happened to all these wrinkles? Well, basically, this edge here is thicker than it is over here in the center. It's just squishing all that metal in there and making it thicker and thicker to take up the slat, to take up the wrinkles. This is called upsetting. And when you're upsetting, you got it against here, and you're just kind of just working that in. Like so. Let's see. Uh, from time to time, you are going to have to reflatten the top. Um, this ridge along the edge tends to move up, so from time to time, you're going to have to work it back down like this as well. Let's see. Another problem you might find is you get low spots. Like it's a bit low right here. Like this is it's thicker, taller here, taller here, shorter here. So to deal with that, start working this metal here down, just kind of squishing it out like clay. You can also just come across like this and just kind of squish it down. That'll make it thinner here, but that's okay because we don't really care how thick this is. It until you get what you want. Another option is when you're done, put down a piece of sandpaper, preferably on something flat like a metal slab, but if you don't have one, the workbench is fine. Put down some sandpaper, some water, and just Keep sanding it like so until you've removed all the high spots and leveled everything out. But that takes a long time, so the more work you can do with the hammers and the forms before you get to the sanding, the faster the sanding process itself is going to go. And that's pretty much it. Right, if you want, at some point, you can put in various texture marks, which will show up when you patina it. We'll talk about that another day. I also use a hammer texture on there. I kind of like that effect. This has been used a lot. That's why it started to turn green. This is a new, a newish one. I don't think it's been used. So it's still got that nice dark brown color. And that's from uh, something called liver of sulfur. We'll talk about that another day. And that's pretty much it. Let's do this. Just keep going. Keep working, working, working. And that takes a while. I'm going to cheat. Use this one. It's metal. I mean, it's going to transfer faster. I can move it faster this way. So I have to be more careful. Oh, and if I see one side is growing taller, like this one's really short, so what I want to do push it this way, push, the, hold the tight side, the tall side firmly against the form, the short side is loose, and it helps bring that up. Something also to note is your air gap. When you have it out like this, 
there's this nice big air gap in there. So it's going to want to bend when I have it pushed. This way, where it's really tight, it doesn't want to bend, but it wants to kind of even out and really take the shape of the form underneath. So if I got a lot of flaws in the metal, I'm going to put that in tight to work out those flaws. Like, see this ring right here. Once I got that more or less out, To get it's starting to get burned, so it's pretty close to the time that I should stop and hit it with a propane torch. Another thing you can do is take a little piece of metal rod like this, come in here, find your spots that are bothering you, and work on them very specifically. Horn, come in here and go like, okay, I really want that spot down a little. It's and this is how I take care of the really persistent levels. Yeah, that's better. Here's another one that, yeah, it's getting pretty bad. That one really needs to be taken care of. Before I move on, and work it from both sides. And that's all I can share as far as knowledge. The rest is just practice and patience.